Uh, hello everybody, uh, welcome back, um, video number two, and um, still on this whole Revit thing. So, what we've got here, um, in the previous um, video, or the very first video, um, I, I talked about Revit straight out of the box, and the, more of the, about the concept of BIM, what sort of hardware you would need to run the software. Um, let's assume all that's done you've got the software, you've clicked um, somewhere on your computer, the big R, and this is where it leads you. Okay, and this is the front splash screen for the software. Okay, for everything. It's a pretty classic sort of uh, way of um, that Autodesk do things. So they give you current projects, um, got your quick toolbars up there, you got your proprietary sort of icon at the top there we left click that and see a few little bits and bobs in there um, learning and help etc so that's it's pretty classic Autodesk so but for Revit a um, few little specifics okay so we see here in the top row okay projects and projects are the files that we use um, to do work in Revit. It's as simple as that. So, if you want to start a new job um, in Revit, you start a new project. Below here in the grid here, or in the row here, we have the families. Okay, and we've got f four icons here, and these show the families that are being utilised recently. Um, for those that are, for people that are familiar with um, Autodesk um, and AutoCAD, etc., or even some of the uh, other drawing software, families, uh, the, the closest analogy would be blocks. Um, basically, set pieces of information that you can bring into or become part of a project, and you can manipulate them and make your own, etc. Okay, they're a bit more special than blocks, I suppose, but Revit likes to call them families. Okay, so not much more to see in here. What we are going to do now though is we are going to open up a new project. So this is um, Revit LT. So this is the light version of Revit. Um, and one of the main reasons for that is that there are less buttons to press. It's a lot simpler, it's a lot easier for training and learning. Um, etc. So now to start a new project got a couple of options. No more. We've got projects here and we've got open. You can open an existing one or you can go new or you can click on the big R at the top left hand corner. Click on that. We go new project. Do this it's going to lead us to the exact same place. So, new project, we go OK. So, if I cancel that, and if now if I go new, it's an exact same little window. So, we now says new project. Okay, before we even look at the first part, and this is a little quirk of Revit, I think, is that sometimes the, the most important things are at the bottom, and the least important things are at the top. So, important thing here, the differentiation is with Revit, is each time you click new, you can either create a new project or a project template. So a template, as it would, the name would suggest, is a template that you can use to create other projects with. Um, we don't need to do that right now because we're just doing a very introductory um, look EC. Um, so we go create a new project. And then we have the template file. Now if you have installed Revit correctly, Okay, um, if I click this down arrow here, okay, we should see just the architectural template. And if I go into browse, okay, so what it's got here tells me to choose template. Okay, we're in Australia, so I've loaded the Australian template, and we get one default template to start off with. Okay, so by default, like as you mentioned, if you've done the job, um, 
done the install correctly then this should already be here now we can just go OK OK and Revit will boot up and here we have the main screen OK so this is our workspace OK now for those that are students, learners who are used to the AutoCAD environment, okay, one of the very first thing you probably notice is that everything is white. Okay, so Revit operates in um, black on a white environment, so it's effectively like a paper space environment. Um, and when I first started using Revit, um, I was a, I was an AutoCAD user. First thing I noticed for a few first few days was I was getting blinding headaches because I wasn't used to the white screen. So, um, but believe me, after a little while you get used to it, um, and you can adjust your screen obviously to tone things down a little bit. Um, the, there is the ability to change the screen tone, etc. But um, within Revit, but this is the default, um, and in the end, it actually is easier to use. So what parts of the interface do we have? Okay, let's start at the top left hand corner. Okay, so at the top left hand we've got our, our big R again. So if I left click on there, we've got some immediate sort of menus. Uh, new, open, save, save as. Um, exporting, so very quickly in here. So we go export, CAD formats, so we can um, export as um, DWGs, a DXF, um, or a DGN, which is Microsoft. Um, we can export Im images and animations, reports, options, etc. We can do some publishing, and we can choose our print dialog from here as well. The, the right-hand tab here, we've just got our recent documents, so you can see these things are the ones that I've actually used in the past. Um, recently, so you see here we've got a level head triangle and in brackets M and a dot RFA, and uh, that means a Revit family. The next one down, uh, Supernatural Group Revit LT 2016 da 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 dot RTE. That's a template file, so that's um, a file that I've been working on, basically re reworking uh, my existing template. So that's where I was working before. And down the bottom there, okay, we've got a job there with a .rvt file, and that's a project file. So that's what we're going to be working on eventually, okay, when we actually get drawing. Okay, so hit escape button, get out of there. We've got some quick toolbars up here, so just quick fix, quick hit, quick access stuff, okay. So you can click on this little down arrow, and you can customize that to however you want. Um, experienced Autodesk users will probably recognize some of those be probably be quite comfortable with that fairly quickly um, coming down from there we have the ribbon okay so this is where all the work it is a very common um, effect now it's basically anything to do with Microsoft seems to pretty much have this ribbon effect now uh, Revit introduced it in 2010. A little bit of um, yeah, the first attempt was okay. The second attempt in 2011 is very similar to what you see now. So, and we have a few tabs here. So we've got an architecture tab where we do all our building. So we've got construction elements, walls, doors, windows, all the core stuff that actually makes us very quickly build um, a design element. Um, some circulation, some modeling elements room and area which are more annotative re requirements, openings, datum, grid work, levels etc and work planes. We've got a structure element so we can incorporate some basic um, structural elements into um, a Revit LT um, project um, if we were using the full elements of uh, Revit we would have access to a lot more information through the structural um, side of the, the, the program. Um, we've got an insert tab so we can link Revit files that's very much like xrefing. We can import CAD files, we can insert from other files so we can drag information from other projects. Um, very handy if you've got de standardized details that you want to find and some images etc. 
we've got an annotation tab. Okay, dimensions, um, elevations, coordinates, detail information. So this is all 2D line work, revision clouds. Uh, got text, tagging, fantastic um, element of Revit. It's really cool. Okay, a couple of other little bits in there, some symbols. Okay, we have the site tab here. Okay, and this is where you build your the physical elements or create the canvas for you to, to put your buildings on. So this is where you create your property lines, then you create your um, topo surface, and then you can break it up and do quite a lot with it. And um, we've got a view tab. Okay, so this is basically how we control a either how Revit looks or if we want to create new types of views so we can create new plans elevation sections um, etc we've got sheet, com sheet composition uh, windows so basically opening your window tabs etc and we've got the user interface which tells us you know what things we have visible on our screen second one is a manage tab so this is our settings, so um, materials, styles, um, lesser used settings, project location, quite important, uh, phasing, extremely important if you're doing um, renovation works um, or multi-stage works. And then last tab here is the modify tab. So we've got our properties, um, clipboard, which is pasting and copying geometry so we can muck around with existing elements um, so we can cut elements we can join some elements together um, a little, little tool here called wall joins which sort of basically helps create different tells Revit to join walls together in different ways the real classic sort of modifiers of elements move copy rotate trim align mirror um, extending all of that wonderful stuff it's all there Okay, some viewing things, we can turn line work on and off. Um, create a group, which is um, sort of like creating a, an interim block within the um, within the project itself. So that's the the ribbon, okay. And when we get into our next project, this is where we're going to spend most of our time, is in just in the build function and just getting used to things. All right. Below the ribbon on the left hand side by default we have the properties window. Okay, so whatever we are clicking at the time, at the moment we were just in a floor plan, these are the properties that are available to us. Okay. So scale. So the important thing here with um, with Revit is that you work in a nominated scale. Um, if you're in AutoCAD and you're in model space, you are working at one to one. Okay, and um, so it's really, really important with Revit that you understand what scale you are in um, and make your choices very, very early on. And we'll discuss that in much more detail later on. Down the bottom left hand corner, by in its default position, is the project browser. Okay, if you are used to AutoCAD, etc., this will be a fairly foreign um, concept. For those who are used to using other BIM systems, ArchiCAD and Vectorworks, etc., they have very similar sort of systems. Okay, and this is where you basically find all the different views that are available to you. So we've got floor plans, ceiling plans, elevations, sections. Okay, these are the, that's just the defaults. You can add more and more views, and you can take them away as in, as the project dictates. Okay, schedules and quantities really really handy for us later on. Okay, the last section to really look at is our drawing board. Okay, so basically this is our drawing view. This is where we do our work. So by default, and this is remember this is the Australian template. So uh, Northern Hemisphere users may not recognise some of these architectural standards, but this is what we so pretty much use in Australia um, and New Zealand. So we've got some elevation markers. Okay, and really important thing here is that north is up. Okay, in AutoCAD by default, north is down on the right hand side. Okay, and you've got to reset your um, units and your orientation accordingly. So 
So this is where all the magic happens. Okay, and at the moment we are currently just sitting in the ground floor plan. Um, they give us one section to start off with. So there's our section there. There it is there in our project browser. Okay, but there's not much else happening at the moment. I can zoom in uh, out just using my middle mouse button. I can zoom in as well. If I want to zo zoom all, I can just very like much like AutoCAD. Double click the middle mouse button and it will give me the zoom to extents or zoom all function. To the bottom left hand corner of the drawing view are some view controls. Okay, so here we have the scale. So as we mentioned before, we start in Revit, you are in the scale that you want to basically print at. Okay, so you're effectively in paper space immediately. Okay, we have um, some detail level. So coarse, medium, fine. Um, as to how much detail we see. Um, visual styles, so we can wireframe, hidden line, which is our drafting view. And we've got some colored views, and we've got some basic rendering views as well. Uh, we've got some shadows that we can turn on and off, cropping the view, crop regions, hiding and isolating, um, and revealing hidden elements. Okay, and this is basically how we learn to basically dictate to Revit what parts we want to see in a particular view. And that is about as close to layer control as we get with this piece of software. There is nowhere in Revit where we a, create layers, um, delete layers, change the way layers behave because they're effectively hardwired into the system and the word layer is not even really used anywhere. Okay, so but as we progress through various projects we'll get used to both these key little items here, okay, certainly from an introductory perspective. Okay, so that very much concludes this video. I'm trying to keep them fairly short because unfortunately it is a bit of a dry topic. Um, I do apologise. Um, next time, what we're going to do, we're going to jump straight in and we're going to just draw a start off with a little project. And again, I'll probably break it into bite sized pieces. Okay, this is something new. Do I want to change the color scheme to improve performance? Okay. Um, I'm just going to say keep the current scheme. Something interesting. Okay. We will catch you later on. Adios.